Well, hi everyone and welcome to our second live webinar with everyone. Today is Tuesday, February 25th and my name is Jennifer Madrill and we have a nice group from our project for the service learning project and what I plan to do today is uh, really insert Gabrielle Blake in as our project manager so she's going to say a few words in a moment she may need to duck out and go to class before we complete the, um, the webinar today but I really want to also look ahead and look in the next few weeks of what our key deliverable should be and I'm already starting to get which is awesome uh, a slew of emails every day with people asking questions and so I want to work through a way that we we can um, start again incorporating Gabrielle into those conversations and then also think of ways that we can make them uh, conversations that we hold on our public Google uh, discussion board rather than um, through emails because the questions as you'd imagine are getting fairly repetitive and so it'd be nice if as we respond to things and I respond to things we can all see the answers and plus I'm hitting up already a wall where uh, I don't know the answers to a lot of things and so it'll be great to be able to reach out to the client as well as to our other faculty members and other advisors to get help and answers and so I'll talk more about that specifically and where we can post things and post questions and already the questions that have um, started coming in because as I said I'm, I'm guessing the questions for a while anyway will be fairly repetitive with people trying to get their head around what the clients looking for and what the projects all about so with that let's kick it off and um, Let's talk a moment about uh, project management in general. And um, as I think we've announced several times now, Gabrielle Blake is um, signed on as the volunteer project manager. She's a student at Old Dominion University. And um, Jill Stefaniak is her faculty advisor and sponsor. And I just wanted to open up the floor to her to go through the next couple slides and um, give us her take on how she would like to work with everyone and uh, what her perspective is on the project so far. Okay. Um, are we going, you, you want to move forward to the next slide? Sure. Or do you want to skip these? Oh, oh. I'm sorry. We're, we're both clicking. I'll let you click. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, you know, you take we're control. I'll stop clicking and you can control. <laughs> Okay, um, I just want to say hello to everybody. Uh, I, I did, we did meet last week, so I met a few of you last week, but I'm really thrilled to uh, be working with everyone. Can everyone hear me? Everybody can hear me? If you can't type down there, you can't hear me, but uh, I'm thrilled to be working with everyone, and um, from here on out, uh, Jennifer and I met yesterday, so here's kind of what we have for the plan going forward. From here on out, I will be coordinating these weekly coordinator meetings with all the coordinating designers just so you don't get confused when you start seeing emails from me instead of Jennifer um, uh, if you can't answer back you're muted right now so if you have a question just type it um, but uh, I will be coordinating these weekly meetings I may have to change up Tuesdays because as Jennifer said I have class every Tuesday at 420 so it makes it a little tight for me and I'm East Coast time so uh, it makes it a little tight for me to do meetings, but I think from here going forward, we'll still do a weekly meeting with the, the coordinators until everyone really starts to feel comfortable in their role, and then maybe we can go to a bi-weekly meeting if, if that's what everybody uh, feels good with. Um, for this week, I would like to meet with each coordinating designer individually via Skype or even on the phone if that's easier for you. So I will send out an email tonight about that, but I'd like to meet with each um, coordinator individually so we can kind of get to know each other and so I can um, make sure you're comfortable with, with your role and what you're doing and, and the plan going forward. And if we need to continue meeting individually, I'm happy to do that. Jennifer will continue to arrange any of the full meetings with the entire team, uh, all of the teams, all of the designers. She will continue to arrange those for now and We'll kind of do those when we have checkpoints or when we have uh, news for everybody. Uh, Jennifer will still set those up. So I just don't want to be confusing when you're getting emails from both of us. Um, so uh, if you have any questions about that or it seems confusing or seems like too many emails, then just let me know and we'll see what we can figure out that will be different. So I think for right now, we'll just continue to correspond through the Google Docs. Uh, I know Jennifer is very open to us using some other systems, but she has a really good foundation in place, and I just don't see any uh, need to change that at this point because I think it will be confusing, and there are a lot of documents up there. So I have some things to put up there. I'll put up my contact information, 
and um, I will look at the Google Docs every day and what you're putting up. So I think for now, unless someone has a problem or something better that's worth switching over to, I think we'll just continue with the Google Docs. Uh, my, like I said, my contact information, that's my main thing tonight is I just want you all to know I'm very available um, contact wise. I'm very good about getting back to people. So if you don't hear back from me within 24 hours, double check with me and make sure that I did get correspondence from you. I will look at all the Google Docs every day and uh, respond to them. Uh, you can email me and I'm going to send out all my contact information tonight after the meeting, after I have class actually. Uh, but you can email me, um, you can tell, you know, text me, call me on the phone, we can meet by Skype. Anytime I'm on the computer, unless I'm in class, I'm usually available through Skype. And um, so just, just ring me up and, and we can Skype. Um, so as far as project updates, uh, like I said, we're just going to continue to do those through the weekly meetings and Jennifer will set up any of the big meetings if we need a big meeting for project updates. So, uh, as far as, um, contacting the, Jennifer and I talked about this yesterday, contacting any of the subject matter experts, there is a place on Google Docs for you to post any questions. And I will monitor that and make sure that you're getting responses in a pretty timely manner with that. So if you could just, if you, if you need their assistance, please post your questions there. And if you need any kind of information from Grace, if you would please just uh, begin emailing that to me. And you can feel free to CC Jennifer on any of that correspondence. It's not a problem whatsoever, but um, I will be the person responding to that. So any questions, uh, please feel free to let me know. Okay, perfect. Um, did you want to uh, talk about any of the other slides or should I just go ahead and jump right in? I think we can, I think Jennifer, we can just proceed with the slides and I'll, I'll hang out for about 15 more minutes and I'll just interject if I need to say something. Sounds good. And, uh, I'll be heading in in about 15 minutes. Perfect. And um, in a few slides, I'll clarify, um, as uh, Gabrielle was mentioning, the um, correspondence on the project discussion board. I actually have included links to that in case folks are, it's a, you know, a fairly significant uh, learning curve, I would imagine. As you come onto the project to, to go to the Google sites we have, we have all the navigation on the left side of the various places you can go, Google Drive folders, there's Google Groups discussion boards, we've got all sorts of stuff. And so I'll, I'm uh, going to break that down a little bit as we go forward as well. So uh, the big picture where we're at, everybody knows the big picture being that we're working on this project for adult basic education and our big focus is on adapting and reusing existing open educational resources. Um, and we, we covered that um, with the client last week and I think through the updates you, you're getting a general sense of what we're trying to accomplish. So now what I want to do is kind of get into the devil and the details of, um, of the project. Probably the best place to start with that is uh, if you haven't had a chance to listen to last Tuesday's session where the client did have the opportunity to um, give their wish list in the webinar and they also have prepared this Google Drive, I'm sorry, Google Doc that's stored in our Google Drive folder. Um, and it just helps to frame, in, a, a, give a general perspective for what they're looking for. But I also wanted to, um, specifically for the group um, the Pilot B group, I wanted to spend a little bit of time pointing you to some resources that are going to help you as you refine your focus. And let's just kind of keep in mind where I'm getting a lot of, as you'd expect, uh, questions right now. So the, the questions I've received so far have been awesome and I'm, I fully expected getting them. Um, but what, what, what we need to just kind of keep in mind is what we're, what the end game is. And at the end of the day, each of the three Pilot B groups are designing approximately a one hour um, it would take an, a learn, the average learner about an hour to work through the instructional module with the potential of working with a tutor um, for, for assistance. And so let's kind of keep that in mind because I know it sounds like a huge undertaking when we start throwing around like words like GED test preparation and um, career and college readiness standards when you start looking at these PDFs, they're monster PDFs. I think the first one that I have linked here is about 160 pages. And so let's just not get too overwhelmed that we're, you know, thinking we need to solve all the world's GED problems uh, with what we're doing. Each group is really only focusing on a very small 
a segment, a very small uh, topic area. And so what we're hoping is through the three projects that are being developed, they will be prototypes or exemplars for other student groups to pick up as we move along. And so what we kind of need to do fairly quickly in here, and I'll talk about specific uh, due dates, but what we need to do pretty quickly for each of the three groups is to uh, zero in on the specific topic that you're going to work on. And so, as I said, if you take a peek at the first bu bullet point here, which is the GED assessment guide, they go through what the content areas are within the GED. They also uh, lay out what the assessment parameters are. And so if you take a, a deep dive into that and, and really spend your initial amount of time getting your head around what the GED test is all about. And just to make you feel at ease, the GED test is brand new in 2014. So you will be at the end of this as much an expert as anyone is on the GED test. So um, it's not like you have, <laughs> you're way behind the curve in terms of, um, of learning what it's all about. And then, um, as I said, after you kind of get a sense what the subject matter is for the test in general, listen again to what and look at the client's wish list for the specific pet project items they had. Um, and then pick your topic. And then also I would recommend, we talked also in the first session, and I've mentioned it a couple times in some emails, the GED test is now aligned with something called the College and Career Readiness Standards. And so for those of you that, that are familiar with K-12 and Common Core, it very much dovetails with that. There's a little difference in terms of how they break grade levels um, and that's probably one of the biggest difference and so again if as, as a second piece of um, information for you to study up on I would take a look at the second bullet point there that's a, a PDF that's been released by the Department of Education just to give a good sense for what this uh, big picture is all about then there's also another and the third bullet point here is a reference from uh, put out by the GED testing um, service at, where they have directly aligned their test with the uh, college and career readiness standards. So that kind of helps after you've gone through the first documents and you just need kind of a cheat sheet just to understand how this all comes together, that will help. Um, and then really, as uh, Gabrielle mentioned, uh, what we just need to do as a, a team of all of us, by the way, there are 50 some of us working on it, so that's why Gabrielle's role is so important here, is we just need to coordinate with each other that we, I can't imagine we would accidentally start working on the same topic, but it could happen. Um, but we also just need to appreciate <clears throat> that Pilot A is right also in the midst of laying out this huge mapping and mining project going out there looking for existing open educational resources that may exist in the K-12 arena that then could easily, or hopefully, relatively easy, easier than starting from scratch, I guess, be adapted for reuse. And in my just very brief um, review of what's out there in terms of open educational resources, it appears there is a, a ton of resources available already in math. Now, whether or not they're great resources, whether it's something that um, our client or others could adapt for adult use is to be decided by Team A as they go through things. Um, where it appears there may be more gaps, um, it would be in social studies and in science, is my guess. This is all just my gut reaction. Um, so uh, as, you, as the Pilot B teams are thinking about topics, keep all of these things in mind and don't sweat the topic too much because there's a lot of content to be covered. Um, anything you pick is going to be helpful, and particularly if you really focus in on some of the wish list items for the client. So I would say most of the questions I had the first week from um, the coordinating designers were in relation to we don't know what topic to pick. And so hopefully through my explanation here that took you know some of the question marks and put you more at ease in terms of what we're looking for. Um, and then in terms of Pilot C, um, a similar story, except they are very much focused in on the idea now that the GED test is uh, computer-based, no longer paper and pencil. And so there's going to be the ine inevitable learning curve for the students who now need to type. Some may have never typed on a computer, uh, and maybe not for a testing purpose anyway. And so as the client mentioned last week, some of their wish list items would be to incorporate some type of um, typing uh, exercise, targeting something around 20 words a minute. 
There are probably a lot of resources that are already out there, and so what would be awesome is if you could find those and incorporate them into what you design rather than um, you know going out and, and recreating something that probably exists. There's probably a lot of free, freely available um, typing programs out there. Um, another area beyond just the typing is um, looking at GED test item types and helping to explain to students what they're going to experience once they um, once they start preparing for the test. So some of the examples are extended responses, um, drag and drop. Some of these terms are probably not, the students will not be familiar with uh, the, the concepts or the terms because they have never um, taken a, a standardized test on a computer and probably many have never used computers for a learning setting at all. And so that's kind of the, the your charge then is to try to use this GED assessment guide to try to understand what the parameters are of the test and the specifically the computer-based test to help the students prepare for what they're going to experience when they um, start preparing for the GED test and then when they actually take it. And then tying into the kind of common theme is just Loop Gabrielle in all this. Um, she's very much up to speed on this whole end game goal and so um, she, she should be able to then help you try to, to, try to refine your focus and your, your topic area. Um, and it looks like we've got some uh, questions uh, from Sharon. Pilot A will be focusing on resources only for a specific area. Actually, Pilot A is focusing on resources for, um, I don't know, maybe Rhonda, if you wanted to, <laughs> to type that while I'm talking, that's fine. Actually, they're touching uh, all bases. So they're looking at math, science, learning, uh, what is it, language arts, and I'm missing one, science, science, social studies, language arts, and math. So... And it looks like Gabrielle needs to, to cut out to class. So thank you very much for joining us. We'll, we'll hook up with you later. And then another big uh, topic area that has been passing through my email uh, inbox this week are questions about the design and the style guides. And uh, I wish I could just hand you a style guide, but we have to develop one. So uh, these are all things we need to think about. And so what I've done uh, in the next couple slides is given you a, a general sense of if I had to do this right now myself, and I, I'm one out of 50 at the, in the end of the, the day, I would design something that looked a lot like sailor.org. Now, I can easily be talked out of that. <laughs> I welcome people trying to talk me out of that. It won't be hard, I don't think, because uh, I really haven't spent a lot of time looking at what our all options and our alternatives are. But I've spent um, the next couple slides, so let me click through them here. Um, this is what sailor.org looks like. Um, basically, they, are do they have done in the past something that we are now trying to do with adult basic education. So they have gone out and prepared open educational resources for of three three main categories, one being university level courses. They're right now working on a project at the K-12 level and they also have some for professional development. So in my mind, we could easily be a row, a new row that would be for adult basic education. And uh, it's to me, this is, it's laid out in a very um, nice manner. Again, I, I I encourage you to talk me out of it or find alternatives or to use this as a base and we go for, for something else. Um, but it's uh, fairly text heavy in terms of the introductory material and how things are laid out. But then once you start drilling down into the individual units, um, which are, for example, here is laid out here. Um, then they start doing some cool things where they're sending folks out to other places on the internet. So it may be a Khan Academy uh, activity. It may be a YouTube video. And so it's it's just a nice way to be able to create some an original content in terms of um, contextualizing the resources that you're putting together. Um, but then at the same time, you're you're taking advantage of what's already existing out there on the internet again without recreating everything. So if if I had to be uh, the boss of the project, I would I would probably have us heading down a path that looks a lot like sailor.org. I have other examples that I mentioned over here. Um, P D P two P U is another example of folks who have attempted to do something like we're trying to do. Certainly, the biggie um, on the block is K um, C K twelve dot org, and uh, it's kind of cool the way they've laid things out. So take a peek at those, and then I strongly encourage everybody just to search the internet for ideas and make suggestions. And so to that end, I've set up a thread within our. Uh, it's our Google Sites um, project um, discussion board, and I've linked it here on the on the 
second, or I guess it's the first bullet point there. But if you click on that, it will take you to the discussion thread. So as you start seeing exemplars and home base ideas that make sense to you, or you'd like to put forward for people to discuss, uh, go ahead and post them there. Um, I think that's all I had for that. And then in terms of uh, pie in the look, so that was kind of pie in the sky. <laughs> Go out and find stuff you're interested in uh, and that you think may make sense. But however, let's always just keep in mind that uh, we have some pretty significant design constraints regarding media and technology. Uh, we have a nonprofit who has uh, lower bandwidth. They um, may not have the most currently available hardware. They have no money to go out and buy any proprietary software that we may want to use to add some additional bells and whistles. Um, we also are dealing with learners who've never used computers for learning and then we also have to keep in mind down the road as we incorporate additional design teams that um, they're all going to be just like us. So instructional designers and developers who are just learning and so again will not have the skills to do a lot of crazy um, things as well, and so let's keep that in mind as we're as we're thinking about how what we want to de design and develop as we go forward. And Sharon's asking, um, th that's a good point. Um, Rhonda's mentioning also an LMS, which I think is great too for. Um, the assessment piece. I think when Rhonda and I were on a webinar uh, a while back, we were talking about the, the assessment being potentially a really neat thing to add in. And when I say assessment, I'm talking more mastery. So we're able to assess learners and determine what at what level they are for the various subjects. And so that's another consideration. If we do something like Sailor, they really don't have it. Um, they don't have the ability to do some wild uh, and great, awesome assessment uh, capabilities. And uh, the question came up in the chat room, it, Moodle's an LMS and it's free. It's a great idea. Um, and we just need to think about some of the bullet points that I have here in terms of sustainability, future adaptability. Um, we have to develop things that our, our client can access, be able to modify, be able to use, because once we're all done with the project and we move on and hopefully can pass it off to somebody else, uh, we just need to be able to make sure that they can, um, can handle that. And then also, if we use Moodle, we have to think about uh, how we're going to host it. And that, that's a small fee, but you know, it's a fee that we need to contemplate is, is how that would work. Um, and then some of the other things I'm reading here in the chat, text chat, I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. Canvas is an option, and I talked to the folks at Canvas, and uh, the, the immediate problem we have is the way they charge for their product. They do have a free uh, platform available. It's mainly for testing purposes for an instructor to go out and see what Canvas is all about and try it. If you move to that next level where you start bringing in large numbers of, of learners, which potentially we would have, they would just, obviously, if they were a business, they would start charging us. And their business model right now is based on full time equivalent students. And so while it's not a complete stumbling block, it's just something we would need to consider because, again, first constraint of our design problem, we don't have any money to pay anyone, uh, let alone to try to start negotiating uh, different amounts based on what our needs might be. So that's why some of the LMS options get a little squishier for us um, because of the constraints we do have in terms of money and sustainability and things like that. But I'm very happy to step up to the challenge and figure out a way to do any of these things. Canvas people were awesome to talk to. You know, they were pretty excited about what we were doing, and maybe if we have get to a point where we have some type of uh, prototype or exemplar to show them, they may be able to make some cool exception um, that I don't even know about right now that we can try to talk to them about. So right now, all options are on the table, and if you have an idea, no, no idea is silly, throw it out there. Um, so we went through these slides. I'm just about done. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit in detail about some of the questions I've received. Candace did a really nice job. Um, she and her faculty advisor came up with a roster of questions that had her um, faculty advisor said that they, she uses as a template when she starts working with a new client. I think I probably have at least 60% of those answers that I can give myself. I've had several offline conversations with the client over the past few months and I can probably do a first pass on the questions and then we'll work with Gabrielle to go out and um, and get additional responses but I would encourage everyone to click on that link and go out and see what the questions are and then either using the comment feature add, add additional questions you may have or then use the discussion board where we have a Q&A set up to start asking questions that you're not seeing and what I'm kind of pointing to here is I love getting emails. It's great. I'm not saying I don't want to get emails. I'm just concerned that if the conversations aren't broad enough, we're going to 
all have the same questions and they aren't being answered. And plus, I'm just one person. Um, Rhonda had some an awesome set of questions that she sent to me earlier today. And frankly, it's beyond my <laughs> expertise as a, on the subject of, of the topic. And so I'm going to do my best to try to respond to her. But um, I'm also going to then probably post a question within the discussion board to try to generate some some discussion. It had to do with the learner analysis piece and trying to get our, our heads around um, where the learners are, are at coming into this experience. And I think unfortunately for us, we're going to find the learners are at all kinds of different ranges. As they talked about last week, we have some learners that can read at a third grade level and some are basically almost done with completing high school and it's just a matter they didn't graduate and they just now need to take the GED. So I think we are going to see, you know, unfortunately, maybe not a, a clear cut answer to some of the questions. Um, but if we could start moving some of those conversations onto our discussion board, that would be, that would be awesome. Uh, and then for pilot team A, um, these are your, in my opinion, kind of your next steps. Obviously, you, you're not necessarily designing a, a design plan for um, for your project, but if, if um, you wouldn't mind, and Gabrielle mentioned she's going to be touching base with all the coordinating designers, um, if you can just start updating Gabrielle on where you're at, some kind of some of your big ticket items that you have question marks on and you still don't know a direction to go or some areas where you want to start focusing. If you could start including Gabrielle in those conversations because as we've I mentioned at the beginning of this session, what you're doing will trickle down to the other teams because if you're finding resources that would help support the work they're doing um, where there's maybe some uh, activities or some videos or whatever it may be that the other teams are able to link to rather than recreate, that would be awesome. Um, and then also uh, we have the subject matter experts that are sitting here. We have a couple, I think, on the call right now who are sitting in the wings and we're trying to figure out ways to incorporate them into what they're what you're doing. Um, Quill West is um, uh, an OER expert and she has a wealth of knowledge on open educational resources and where you can find resources and how you can utilize them in instruction. Um, we have li a librarian, we have um, two in instructional designers and so as a group, and particularly to group A, if you can think of ways that you can uh, start asking them questions on the discussion board or giving them a sense of where you are struggling, that would be great. And there's a separate area within the discussion board specifically to ask questions to them um, as well. Okay, and then project uh, team B and C. Uh, the main focus here, as I mentioned at the first start of uh, the talk today, is to really get your topic narrowed. Uh, so if we can start refining that, and if you could start sending some correspondence to Gabrielle of um, what your focus what your focus will be if we could try to get that done by the early part of next week. So um, Gabrielle has the opportunity then to run it by the client because I have committed to them before we get too far in the design process I will let them know what it is that we're going to be working on for them so they can say hey you know hang on we'd rather you work on this or don't worry about that we have um, where there's been a misunderstanding we don't need help on that or whatever the whatever their response may be we'll give them basically a week to kind of um, think through that and it probably will be a matter of just a couple email exchanges. I don't think that's going to be a big deal uh, based on my my, uh, my conversations I've had with them that, thus far. They're just happy to get anything that we, <laughs> we create, quite frankly. Uh, but then also the next part of that is after you start refining your topic, then it's time to start putting pen to paper or key, fingers to keyboard and uh, start roughing out a design plan. And as I mentioned on here, we can't offer you feedback to a blank doc. And so what we'd like to do is no matter how rough it is, if it's just an outline, if it's just you know something, maybe even a start roughing out a storyboard, I don't even know, however you want to start communicating what your ideas are. Um, if you can start laying that out on your design plan document, we will do a first cut review on March 17th. And so what I'll do is uh, send out an email to all the faculty and the subject matter experts and other advisors saying, please point your browser to the five design, or I guess it would probably depending on what team A does, it'll either be four or five um, design plan documents and um, and start providing them feedback. And so from there, I think that's when the conversations will really start happening. I have a, a design plan, what I'm calling template, and I'm using air quotes that you can't see right now, but I um, asked Jill Stefaniak and then Monica Tracy, who's one of the advisors to the project, to help me think about a template. And I, I don't like the word template because it sounds very confining, but just to give folks a sense for the types of content that we're 
we would like to start seeing on the design plans. Right now it's a very small outline and I really encourage you to ask your faculty advisors as well as the instructional designers who do this for a living. If, if you go to that document and you have recommendations for other things that we should start incorporating in our design plans, that's what this is all about, the open space, the open collaboration. Please start sharing your ideas on things that we should also be considering. Um, and so again, the, the first cut of that would be um, if you could try to get as, uh, as much as you can. We fully understand it's going to be a very rough first cut. Um, if we could have something, though, to look at by Monday, March 17th, we'll be able to start giving teams some feedback. Um, and then I think I'm basically ready to turn it over. I, I'm going to try, as people in the text chat say they'd like me to open up their mic, I'm just going to start doing it one at a time because of potential audio goofiness. Um, but if you wanted to put in the text chat, if, I, I know, Rhonda, did you want to um, say something? Uh, you had mentioned that you had um, had some questions. Did, did, would you, did you have a, the ability to talk on, on a microphone? Or anybody else? Okay. So I made you a presenter. Are you are you on your telephone right now, Rhonda? Okay. Sorry. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, fantastic. Sorry, I had issues with logging in. I had the wrong number <laughs> and what have you. Anyway. Um, Thanks everyone for, for meeting and, and again this project is so exciting and um, our pilot A group met this morning and it's just, just so fun to get started with this. Um, <clears throat> so what we were discussing this morning um, had, had something to do with, you know, as, as we map the OER, are we, how much are we evaluating it, um, one to fit the learner needs and then also, you know, as far as content goes. Um, I, Math seems like a logical place to start because it's it's pretty you know objective as far as you know, lining up with standards, and um, you know I I did a reach out to a colleague of mine that developed my Open Math, which is kind of the open alternative to Pearson's My Math Lab, and uh, you know just sent him the standards and asked him what he thought, and he said ah, I don't know if our content, which is written at more of a college type of level, is uh, from, you know, maybe from a readability or from a you know a level perspective, is it um, you know too high for the population? So that was some of our question there: is do we need a SME to perhaps collaborate with us as we evaluate these um, OER materials? Um, and and what are the thoughts of the team about that? Yeah, these are great questions. Now, because I'm in Starbucks. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I could go for a Starbucks right now. <laughs> that sounds really good. Um, well, you know what? I think this is a perfect place to get um, Quill looped in. And so she's kind of sitting there in the wings waiting for questions. And I told her, you know, we could keep her busy 24-7. So we need to kind of also figure out how to keep it manageable for her. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, wrong Rhonda, but Rhonda's the one who introduced me to Quill West. And again, she's the um, OER director, I guess it would be, for Tacoma Community College in Tacoma, Washington. And so her job, um, just to fill everybody in on what her role is there, um, she goes out to find open educational resources to support the instruction for the community college. And so I'm guessing, and I could be absolutely wrong, that she's had these types of conversations and discussion for her population of learners. And I'm, I'm just curious to hear how she goes about, um, your, specific to your question, how do you then evaluate uh, level, how do you evaluate quality, um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, I wonder if she will have repositories in, in at the top of her head where we can start looking. Um, so Rhonda, I don't know, have you had a chance to reach out to her specifically or um, have talked to her about this at all? Um, we, we did, uh, we, we talked briefly earlier, um, Oh, excuse me, late last week, and we do have a meeting uh, coming up within the next few days. So I'll certainly uh, review that with her. Um, you know, David Lippman with the My Open Math and Quill, they're very close. I mean, they're all out of Washington, so they all know each other. Um, I guess what I'm thinking is, in, in my work as an instructional designer, I look at the SME to kind of guide me in what is appropriate for the learner, too. So... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, not to say Quill wouldn't have ideas. I'm just curious, um, you know, how we use any other projects, SMEs, uh, that, that might be involved, or, you know, if we want to collaborate with them as we start working uh, through that. Because my concern is perhaps the, the judging the uh, applicability of the OER to the learner maybe isn't necessarily in my, you know, purview or, or domain knowledge, certainly, <laughs> especially <Right>. for math. <laughs> right. And you know what? I wonder if it might be after we start going through the questions that we have that we can generate. Um, I'm sure we would have no trouble doing this, but um, it might be a good time right off the bat to get another call going with the um, the client to answer some of these. And when you say SME, I think you also mean um, the client, particularly the client, right? The ones that are working with the, the learners in the past, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I think this would be um, a good time to, to think about set scheduling a next session with them. And I'll, I'll work with Gabrielle on doing that. We'll have the roster of questions from the Project B team. We'll have your set of questions. And um, what I really don't want to do is just start making stuff up, which I would be doing right now, <laughs> which I was getting really exciting, excited as the emails were starting to come in over the last few days. I'm like, oh, good. I don't know the answers to these. So we must be getting into really good, meaty questions beyond just the uh, logistics of the project. So that's awesome. But I, I will definitely um, elevate this to Gabrielle. And, I'll, and when we're done here, I'm going to send an email to the client with your, if you don't mind, copying in you saying, this is the nature of the question we're having about your learner. Um, I'm guessing there, I think you had asked if there was a, a learner analysis that had been done. Um, I don't think so. I don't, you know, I, maybe not in the way an instructional designer would think of in a learner analysis. That said, I'm sure they have a very good picture for us to help describe for us what their, what the learners are. And again, some of it is a little squishy because they they serve clients who just will come in at any age level or maybe been out of formal education for decades. Um, it's kind of all over the place. And so they, they may not be able to just give us a perfect, um, you know, pro profile of what their learner looks like, but at least give us a sense um, how they handle it. Because as you're saying, they have to deal with this as they're preparing their instruction now. So they may have a, a kind of a format or an approach that they use that we can borrow. Um, so excellent questions um, there. And then I, I don't know if there's folks from the other teams that wanted to, and did, is that it, Rhonda? Did I basically, if, if we do that, if we bring the client in, is that going to be a good next step to give you guys guidance? Yes, I think that's great. I, I did see the needs analysis. Um, I'll, I'll put it here in the chat. And, and I, I saw this one. I'm just not sure how, how comprehensive that is or if that's, if that's enough okay. um, for for everyone in the project, okay. but I I did see this one um, as far as reading levels and things like that. And you know what? It, I did just triggered a, another thought on your project in in particular. Your project has the least definition around it, Project A, <laughs> because as you're saying, there's a you know an open educational resource could be something that one person puts out. It could be. Uh, MIT open course. I mean, it could be, there's a whole range of what it could be. And so I think um, rather than, you know, documenting everything we find, it would be more a more a uh, position of documenting things that we can actually use. <laughs> and so the, the, the point being, here's some great resources. We're showing them and this is maybe we're tr doing our best to try to um, map them to a certain level and for a certain uh, portion of the GED. And here's where we're seeing big gaps. And I think that would probably be my best guess as a marching order for your team, rather than making any type of attempt to document everything that you find <laughs> related to the topic, but more make a t some type of uh, qualitative assessment of uh, an evaluation of whether or not you think the resource, resource is worthwhile of our attention. And um, Sharon, I don't know if you have your uh, mic on, but Sharon's a librarian and also works um, as a peer tutor at a high school here in the Chicago area. And Sharon, I don't know if you wanted to uh, say a few words as a subject matter expert in this area as well. You're, you're probably pulling your hair out saying she has no idea what she's talking about. I wish I could, <laughs> I wish I could say something. But I can open up, you know what, I'll, I'll open up your mic, Sharon, if, you're, or if you have the ability and would like to say something. Uh, so, Okay, so I just unmuted you, Sharon. I'm not sure if you have the ability to to talk. Okay, go. Yeah, I think I can sort of hear you. Okay. 
Um, what, what's the question? Oh, okay. If you could turn it, can you turn up your mic just a smidge? I'm not sure if you have the ability to do that. Um, well, uh, just wondered if you wanted to add some perspective to, to Rhonda's question and then my response in terms of the direction for their project. So a couple areas, one being what should they be focusing on and how can they kind of draw a box around uh, what they're what they will not only be looking for but also how they'll report back and then the second being um, trying to make some type of uh, assessment or evaluation of the grade level of the materials that they find okay you should I think you should be unmuted now if you want to give it a try Okay, I'm sorry, there was some noise in the background. Uh, the question again? Oh, okay. Um, I was just wondering if you could comment on um, both Rhonda's question and then my response regarding the direction for Project B, for Pilot B. Or Pilot A. Sorry, sorry about Pilot A. Can you just repeat the question? Oh, sure. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, we're kind of getting some goofy audio. I'm not sure if you can hear me right now, but I was just wondering if you could comment on the Rhonda's question and then my response. Oh, I think I think Sharon might be having some audio. Can you hear me, Sharon? Yeah. Oh, can you can you can hear me now? Okay, so Rhonda's question had to do with uh, wondering um, the focus of their project A. So should uh, how should they not only match the resources they find to an appropriate subject matter and grade level, but also uh, how they can put a box around what it is they're looking for. So it, it's not a mat in my opinion, it's not a matter of going out and find finding and documenting, documenting every potential resource, but making some type of uh, qualitative assessment on uh, whether or not it would be worthwhile to use that resource or adapt it for the future. And so I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that. Oh, you know what, Sharon, I'm sorry, we're not able to hear you. We're getting really bad audio on your on your setup. So you know what, Sharon, if you wouldn't mind just typing some comments, if, and then we'll also try to figure out a way to, I don't know if you wanted to call in, if that might be better. I don't know if you're trying to dial in on your computer, but we're having some audio goofiness. Okay, all right, I'm typing this question to Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so anybody else want to take a, a shot at their audio? I, I know we, it's hard to do it like this because we're, we run into the inevitable audio glitches, but does anyone else want to take a crack at asking uh, a question with their either their phone or the audio? Okay. So I guess that's a no. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go ahead and wind things down. Uh, I just really want to thank everybody so much for joining today, as well as just keep keep the questions coming. Um, as I was saying, emails are fine, but I'm probably going to keep start pushing people to the discussion board so we can um, open up the, the conversation to everybody. And um, to Rhonda's question, we're going to try to um, set up a, a time we can meet with the subject matter experts that we have on deck, Quill, as well as Sharon, and then also try to loop in the client to get some of your questions answered. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. Have a great uh, week. I'm going to be gone in New York for a couple days, but Gabrielle's around. She's very responsive, and if you have any questions, just, just let us know. Thank you, everybody.